Hi guys, it's Swank Ivy, and I'm here to do Letters to an Asexual number 9. This time's selection is going to be actually a letter that was sent to me by another asexual. I usually feature stuff that's kind of ignorant or annoying or whatever, but this time I'm dealing with a letter where I was asked directly for advice from someone who is dealing with the same kinds of questions that I deal with on a regular basis. And this particular listener wanted to ask me to give some advice on how to deal with family relationships and discussing asexuality with people in your life that are supposed to be uh, those who love you and support you the most, but can't seem to get asexuality through their heads. So, you know, they will employ some very disappointing and some very frustrating techniques to try to contradict you or get you into therapy or something like that. And so I was asked to discuss some techniques for dealing with that sort of thing. So basically when you're dealing with family or friends who are trying to impose an intervention on you, then there's two things that you need to be armed with. And one is an understanding of their perspective, of course, and the other is a game plan for how you're going to handle their, their attacks, because sometimes these really are attacks. Now, um, on their perspectives, it helps to get a sense for where they're coming from and why they're doing this to you. So here are the assumptions that they're probably entering this the discussion with. This should help. Um, one, um, they believe every person who's healthy is sexual. Obviously, I don't have to go into why we don't believe that's true. Um, two, uh, your asexuality is a decision and that they can convince you to give it up. And obviously we know that it's not something we decided, that an orientation is not something that a person chooses. So uh, the third assumption that they may be coming to the discussion with is um, that uh, there's not a solution that doesn't involve you changing something about yourself. They're in this to convince you to change, and this there is no end to this until they have convinced you. So, uh, let's see, number four, the assumption that they might be coming in with is um, that you owe their way of life a chance, while, of course, they don't owe you any respect for your way of life. So, they believe that it's your closed-mindedness that's preventing you from trying what they want you to try. Um... Number five assumption, they may want you to have happiness in the form of marriage and children, mainly because that's how they found happiness or expect to find happiness. Empathizing is not most people's strong suit, as you surely know. And so they believe failure to find happiness their way is failure to find happiness at all. And that leads into assumption number six, um, which is they really believe that they're helping. They really think that they are. So we, we might laugh at that, but it's important to remember that they're doing this most of the time not to attack you, even though it feels like an attack, but because they really do think they're helping you. So anyway, here are some suggestions on how to deal with them. Now, I would say there's two main schools of thought on how to deal with people who are trying to change you. Now, I call them naughty and nice. <laughs> You may have to try them both if one doesn't work, but of course I recommend trying nice first. And that's that would be the straightforward, honest, respectful technique um, of educating them. Sounds simplistic, but that's basically what it is. It's educating them. Uh, I consider this the most effective in the long run, but um, even if a person has been like loud and confrontational to you about this subject before... Um, I still, I still recommend trying it, even if you sort of have to shame them into it. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, so sometimes you can get a serious discussion out of people by using sort of incendiary statements. Like, um, if you don't want to have a real discussion about it, I guess that means that you expect me to listen when you won't. Or, okay, that's fine if you don't want to learn anything. Or, um... Maybe, uh, have you ever considered taking a class on better communication? Because uh, listening doesn't really seem to be your strong suit. So anyway, if someone actually does want to hear your point of view, you don't, you're not going to have to go there. But sometimes you have to temporarily shame them into realizing that they have to at least pretend to be open-minded. 
if they expect you to be open to their perspective. And then you can sneak in a few actual points that, you know, they'll be forced to acknowledge them. So just as a note, um, it also really helps if you can get the person alone. Because if you can help it, um, it takes away this this opportunity for them to, like, gang up on you. Which, that'll happen a lot if they get just a group of people who are trying to do this intervention on you. And then they have the numbers and you're attacked, you're alone. So if you can get the person to be, if you can drag them off on their, their own to be alone and have this discussion one-on-one, uh, they have to hold their own, they have to uh, come up with their own defenses, and it's just, it's, it's a much clearer dynamic between you and another person to have an honest discussion about it. So anyway, um, once you enter this conversation, better prepared, imagining that you know what they're coming to this conversation with these assumptions, and they may not have done very much thinking about what might be going on in your head, so you should be, you should be able to be successful in this situation. So anyway, um, here's the things to point out when educating the unbelievers about asexuality. Um, here's uh, number one, uh, you are not alone. It seems like a lot of people think that you just made up asexuality and you're the only one making this up. You're the only person just because you're the first person they've encountered it in. And since you're not the only asexual in the community, there's a community, sometimes um, people will open their eyes and they'll agree to educate themselves when they find out you didn't make this whole thing up. Okay, um, number two, um, you can give them information. So link them to magazine articles, YouTube videos, AVEN, um, legitimate studies. Um, I'll list some in the info of this video after, um, in the info block. So sometimes you kind of have to slip into like the naughty realm that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, if you encounter resistance, you can kind of suggest that, oh, they clearly aren't interested in educating themselves, which people hate hearing that. Um, or ask them what they're afraid of finding out. If th that there's something to what you've been saying all this time. So make it clear that you're more than open to answering questions for them. I mean, unless it's somebody that completely doesn't have a right to be asking you personal questions, that you're not saying, screw, your, you know, screw it, go educate yourself. Um, so what if, they, what if they actually want more information about dealing with this in a constructive way, then they should be open to reading an article or two, at least. So, you have a point there. Anyway, um, let's see, three, um, accept their criticisms and listen. And say things like, I, I understand why you might say that, but... And, you know, I can't go into detail on what criticisms that they might bring up, but, you know, the ammunition for all these things that they might say, the commonly suggested reasons are found in my asexuality top 10 series if you go look that up so I can give you some ammunition there um, but most importantly you have to remind them that you didn't decide to be asexual so much as you realized that term fit you and um, you're not go you're, you're gonna keep using that term until or unless it doesn't fit you anymore so sometimes people will calm down and you know when you tell them you haven't decided against falling in love or getting married or whatever, um, you might know, you might personally know beyond a shadow of a doubt in your own mind that you won't have this experience or you don't expect to. But if you say to them, make sure they understand that it's not because you decided that. It's not a decision. So remind them that asexuality means that you haven't been attracted to other people and you're not currently attracted to other people. So you have a reasonable reason to imagine that you won't be in the future and you're comfortable using the term. So really, you actually do have to accept, okay, well, maybe I will change. But, you know, and this is key, so might they. So sometimes if you bring that up and say, of course, someday I might change. I mean, it happens, and you might wake up gay tomorrow. It could happen. Sometimes that puts the lights on for them, I think. This possible but not probable thing that they have, they have trouble imagining it, but that, if you put it in those terms, sometimes they'll realize possible but not probable is as close as they're going to get here. So, um, what that does is it takes away the dogmatic tone of like, I'm never going to be sexual towards someone, I'm never going to be in love, or whatever your situation is, um, 
you just have to accept, okay, well, yeah, sure, maybe it might happen, but they, ha they similarly have no right to keep saying that it will happen. If you, know, if you have to be open to this, so do they, about it not happening. So um, just like reminding them that you're acting in accordance with how you currently feel, um, just like a heterosexual person uh, does when they they when they choose to let um, their attraction to the opposite sex lead to marriage and children, um, you can't prove a negative because like on the outside never looks just looks the same as not yet. So sometimes you can find acceptance if you agree, you know, between the two of you that you know yes it might be not yet just like it might be never and they have to understand that it could possibly be never and you're not being dogmatic about it when you're saying they should be prepared for that outcome okay anyway number four um ask them to ask questions you can prompt them even you can say you know why do you think a person can't be asexual or what's your problem with it or do you understand what it means so that opens a whole can of worms there for you um, number five, um, remind them that they need to respect you. This should be obvious, but sometimes if their behavior is hurtful and you tell them, sometimes that works wonders because usually people don't want to disrespect you. Usually they, they don't want that. And so elaborating a bit can really open their eyes and say stuff like, you know, you keep denying my experience and telling me I can't be feeling what I'm feeling so how do you, how do you expect me to feel about that when you keep doing that to me? Um, so, you know, and there's a little bit of that nasty again, you know, the shaming, like, how could you do this to me kind of thing? Um, you know, you're being condescending and, um, you're treating me like I'm not qualified to understand or speak about my own life, that sort of thing. So anyway, and, um, number six of my suggestions here, um, the nice ones, this is kind of just an extra one, but um, tell them they can talk to me. Um, I'm a huge advocate for the asexual community, and I truly wouldn't mind it if a family member or a friend of an asexual person wanted to email me and ask me a question or, you know, look for my advice. Um, you can give them my email, give them my channel. I, I'll even Skype with them if I have to. Um, and while I know I don't represent the whole asexual community and we don't have one single voice, um, I do have my basics down pat, and if I encounter a special situation that I don't feel qualified to speak on, then I can refer you, so I wouldn't mind.